The scene is coming together, and you are now ready to use Mass Effects. Right click an empty area of the main toolbar and choose Mass Effects Toolbar. When the toolbar appears, click the first icon to display the tools window. Notice the default Use Ground Plane option. This means objects will collide with the level zero plane when they start falling due to gravity. The gravity default value is meant to simulate gravity on Earth, but here we'll go for a slow motion effect. Set the gravity to a minus 10, that's about 40 times weaker than normal gravity. Select all the pieces that make the word quake. You need to assign them to the simulation. Click and hold the second icon on the Mass Effects toolbar. Basically, there are three types of rigid bodies you can use dynamic, kinematic, and static types. The static type doesn't help here, as it is meant for objects that will not move, but only used for collision purposes. Clearly, these pieces need to move as they crumble. Both dynamic and kinematic options involve moving pieces, but if you want the objects to only start moving at a certain time, then you need to use the kinematic option. Go to the Edit panel. Here, you can assign physical properties such as density, friction, and bounciness. You can also choose a preset that takes care of these. Use the concrete preset for this example. Notice also how the physical mesh is set to convex by default. This is meant to simplify the shape of the collision object to help with the simulation. This often works well, but does require your attention in certain situations. Notice, for example, in this part of the letter Q, how the convex gizmo tries to simplify the curve. In this case, this means that objects will collide with that area inside the curve of the object. If you want to prevent that, then you can switch this individual piece from convex to composite, and then generate a set of hulls for its collision detection. The geometry is not subdivided, its collision detection representation is. You can adjust the parameters to create more or less hulls. There's another piece that could prove problematic, the corner of the letter E. Set it to composite and generate a set of hulls for it. One last thing remains. You still need to define when the pieces start reacting to the simulation. If you recall, the camera shake starts at frame 50, slowly at first and then ramping up. It would be nice to have the word start crumbling a little bit later, maybe around frame 200. And herein lies the problem. With all the pieces selected, enable the Until Frame option. This is where you define the frame at which the simulation takes over, frame 200 in this case. Unfortunately, a little glitch prevents you from defining a frame number higher than 100. If you were to select just one piece and go to the Modify panel, you can certainly adjust it there. However, this isn't a solution when dealing with hundreds of objects. And so, you'll automate this through the magic of MaxScript. Here's a little hint if you're not a born programmer. To see what kind of code you need, right-click in the lower left corner to open the listener window. Make sure the listener shows both white and pink areas. Choose Macro Recorder Enable. This will let you see your action codes in script. Just as you did a second ago, select the piece of the word Quake. In the Modify panel, change the Until Frame value to 200. Notice how the pink area is now populated with Mac script code. You are interested in the last line. The dollar sign is for the currently selected object, and the rest of the line changes the modifier value. If you want, you can disable the macro recorder at this point. Select all the pieces you want to assign to frame 200. In the white area of the listener window, type in the following. For I in selection do, open parentheses. 
The i is a variable you just defined as the current selection, all objects. It can be any letter you choose. You're basically saying that for every object in the selection, do something. In parentheses, you need to copy-paste the line of code you generated earlier except you need to change the dollar sign to the I letter so that the line reads for I in selection do I dot modifiers bracket pound mass effects etc etc with the cursor at the end of the line press enter to run the script as you test the objects in the modify panel you'll notice they're all set to 200 Close the listener window. You are now ready to test the animation. Click the Start Simulation button on the Mass Effects toolbar to watch the animation unfold. When you're ready to record the animation, you can use the Bake All button in the Tools panel. A final animation in MP4 format is also available to view for your convenience. In this tutorial, you use the Mass Effects Dynamic Simulation to animate text crumbling under the effect of an earthquake. In order to achieve that, you also learn to break down an object into pieces using a couple of different techniques. These techniques involve ProCutter, which is available in 3ds Max. The other involve the freeware script called Fracture Voronoi, available for download from www.scriptspot.com. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll chat with you again soon.